Hey everyone, so welcome to this quick introduction that I'm making to working with deep learning classifications in ArcGIS Pro. Now, this is going to be more of just an overview or a quick introduction, and I'll be giving more detailed steps and optimization techniques in following videos. So, first of all, I'm using a test image, and that's from a RapidEye 4 satellite image. And this has the red, green, and blue bands, as well as red edge and near infrared. And this is at a spatial resolution of 5 meters. And so you can see this test image has a diverse series of landscape classes. And so there's residential, water, uh, a lot of agricultural fields, a uh, wetland in the center here, and some industrial areas. And so the first step to doing a deep learning classification is creating your training samples. Now you can do this through the classification tools or the DERP deep learning tools. I personally like just using the training samples manager better. You can use this pre-made uh, classification scheme or you can make your own. So in this case you'd make your own and I'd start with uh, water and you can make that blue and then you give it a value and then you can make another class that could be agriculture and you can make that too. I'll choose a green. And so for this you'd want to use only the rectangle so any of the polygon shapes here and you would want to choose a wide distribution of different objects from each class you want to create and you want to spread them throughout your image as well as uh, trying to maintain a balance depending on the distribution and amount of this land cover throughout your image. And so I'm quickly just going to create a few uh, samples here for you. And so you would go through like that, and then you would create samples for each of your classes. And I've already actually done this. So I've created myself a pre-made scheme. And then I'll just import that here for you. And so I created many different classes for mine. And then we could go to the sample training data that I've made just to uh, give an idea of how many. So you need a lot of training data for the deep learning models. And you would you would obviously put more care and time into this one. This is just a sample that I quickly made for this example here. And so once you have uh, this all made, you'd want to save it. And then you would go to uh, your toolbox here and you would do because now what this tool does is the export training data tool actually extracts what is uh, underneath and creates little image tiles and so we will feed those image tiles into our uh, deep learning model and that will it will learn from these tiles and try to uh, understand the different land covers within your image. And so the input raster, this would be the RapidEye 4 image in my case, and the output folder. So I would just select a new folder here. feature class, so that would be your uh, training samples that you just made. And then uh, you can leave the tile sizes by default, or you can play with larger or smaller tile sizes, but I'm just going to leave all these settings to default. The next important setting you want to change is the metadata format, and this is very important because it changes the type of models you can run. 
So if we want to do a pixel classification, we want to change this to classified tiles. And then uh, we can just hit run. And this will export the tiles for us. OK, so the export training data tool is finished. And this created about 765 tiles. And ideally, you want between 500 and 5,000 tiles created. So for this, for an image of this size, you would ideally want uh, closer to 2,000 at least. But for our example, this should be fine. And uh, these tiles sort of look like uh, this. So they are just a series of images with their accompanying uh, labels. And if you open one of the images in Photoshop, it's just a little 256 by 256 uh, pixel tile here. And next, we would actually use these tiles to train our deep learning model. So, so train deep learning model and input training data. So for here, you would select your training data. OK, so once it's just finished loading, uh, you will see that the output has changed. I'll just keep this output by default. The max epochs, I recommend setting this closer to 100 at least, but uh, that will increase the time it'll take to actually run. And if we have a stop model when uh, the accuracy no longer improves selected, then uh, we'll actually stop before this if subsequent epochs don't actually improve the model at all. And so the important step is selecting your model type. In this case, I'm going to select unit because I like the results it produces. But in the future, I'll do a comparison between the results produced by these other models. And so I'll just leave these all for default here today, and I'll go over what they do in the future. And I'll just hit run here, and then we'll come back when the results are done. OK, so the tool is finished. And it uh, after about 34 epochs, there was no improvement, so it stopped. And it took about 20 seconds per epoch for me. And our final accuracy was about 87%. And so once we are done with this tool, we have our model trained. And we can go to the uh, classify pixels using deep learning. OK, so that once that's finished, you'll see your classified image has appeared now. And we can see that the classification is not perfect, and it could be optimized in the future. But this is just a general overview of how the process actually works. And in the future, I'll be providing a series on how to improve these results and to tune your models and to optimize the hyperparameters and using uh, something called automated deep learning.